So if you came over from Gary's main speech, this is the question and answer session that he held directly after. Now if you didn't come here from the speech, the link to the main speech is in the description below and it's going to be at the end of the video. So sit tight and I hope you enjoy this question and answer. Show you stuff. Uh, you guys have any questions? You want me to clarify something I said that makes no sense to you whatsoever? How I got started? How you should get started? Yes? What's your opinion on PETA? My opinion on PETA? PETA sucks. By the way, I usually write that on the board. I didn't write that today. Uh, I usually write, no, I'm not with PETA. Now, PETA sucks for a lot of reasons. And by the way, I don't want you to take this out on the animals because PETA sucks. A lot of people, a lot of groups involved, and a lot of movements suck. But you still have to understand the message and forget about the messenger. Uh, PETA sucks for a couple reasons. Number one, they exploit women. Constantly using naked women in their campaigns. I don't understand how exploiting one species to try and help you know, and the exploitation of another is productive. And I understand that women and everyone has a right to do to their body what they want. I have some friends, of course, over the years who have worked at PETA, some of the uh, women who have done these naked campaigns. And I had a friend tell me once, Gary, it's my body, and I want to use it to help the animals. I said, okay, I get that. But you are objectifying women. And on top of it, it doesn't even work. Like, I know why sex is used to sell things. You guys know why, too. Boy, you tell some guys. Spray some stuff on your body and 12 women are going to tap you in the hallway and rape you guys like, hey, give me some axe, man, spray it on. You tell a guy you'll get laid if you drive a Harley. Guys are saving up, you know, buy a Harley. But you show Pam Anderson's boobs on a billboard? How is this teaching people about what pigs go through and cows go through? Now, I've talked about this with Ingrid Newkirk, the founder and president of PETA over the years. She goes, Gary, you know how many more people see Pam Anderson billboards in your speech? So, oh, it's not even close. But are you telling me guys are walking through Times Square? Okay, there's four guys walking through Times Square, and it's like, hey, what's up? Oh, look at those tits. Let's go get some tofu. It's on me. That's not what's happening. At least if it worked, I can understand why they would do it, but it doesn't work. I'll give you another horrible example. In 2002, now, just to be fair and open, uh, I've taken money from Peter in the past, from 2002 to 2005. I'll take money from McDonald's if there's no strings attached. And there were never strings attached. My speech, my words, my thoughts, my lecture tour. Uh, they invited me to two th in 2002 to come down to their headquarters in Norfolk. And uh, while I was there, it was staff meeting day for the month. So they go into the big room, 110 people sit there and watch all the media that they've done for the month. Well, in 02, they were using Tracy Bingham, one of Pam Anderson's co-stars on Baywatch, in another Naked Women campaign. They had her, they had her marked up like a cow, different parts. And of course, the main focus, because she was sitting there like this with her ass out, and it said rump. So Jay Leno that night, the following day, after this campaign, Jay Leno, on his opening, in his opening monologue on The Tonight Show, comes out and says, man, did you guys see that PETA campaign with Tracy Bingham? With a rump like that, I'll never go vegetarian. I shriek and I'm like, oh. and everyone in the room says, yeah, woo! Over the person next to me, like, why is everybody clapping? Jay Leno mentioned PETA. He said he'd never go veg. Oh, he mentioned PETA. This is PETA's goal, just to get mentioned, as if that does anything. So ridiculous. And the other problem with PETA is that they kill homeless dogs and cats. And Ingrid Newkirk is a psychotic serial cat killer. If you go to my website, and click on other animal issues. I have an essay entitled PETA and Homeless Animals where I expose everything they've done. I don't believe in that old boys network stuff about not telling on somebody just because they supposedly believe the same things you believe in. Like the cops not telling other cops when they're beating up you know, people in prison. So I expose them profusely for this stuff. She actually sends people out into Norfolk, Virginia every day with traps and they catch live feral cats. Take them back to the PETA compound and kill him in the backyard in a shed. Seen it with my own two eyes several times. Insane. Ingrid has convinced herself and everyone else, they have de deified themselves, that cats and dogs, by the way, are not happy unless they have human companionship. Now, I've been on the road for a long time, 2,500 lectures in 30 states. I've driven to nearly all these states, too, from Michigan to California. You know how many times I see a dead cat on the side of the road? Almost never. You know what I see, though, every 50 to 100 feet, dead on the road? Squirrels and raccoons and opossums. 
So if their goal is, and this is what she claims, well, they're going to get hit by cars, well, then why don't you round up the squirrels and the raccoons that are always getting hit by cars? Oh, well, we don't have that affinity for them as we do for the cats. But listen, cats are completely fine on their own. Feral cats? Do you know that cats aren't even a domesticated species? Even though they live with us, they're an oddity. For some reason, they enjoy our company like dogs do. But cats are completely wild creatures. That's why they can survive outside and be the little killers that they are. Killing birds and mice. They don't need any help survive. None whatsoever. But check out that uh, essay on my uh, website, Peanut and Homeless Animals. One question? So, um, since you, you are saying that we shouldn't eat uh, this meat and that we should care about all these other animals and all these great things, um, what do you think about animals that, uh, that are in other species that do the same thing, such as lions, tigers, jaguars, wolves, panthers, hyenas, dogs, bears, and cats, as you just mentioned? Too. I don't like it one bit, and I'll be the first vegan activist on this planet to say this. To me, the only evolved species on this entire planet is the herbivore animal. The zebra, the antelope, the deer, the elephant, giraffe, rhinoceros, hippopotamus. Fortunately, 75% of animals on this planet are not killers. They're not carnivores and omnivores. They are herbivore animals. And I don't think we should be justifying human behavior based on lion behavior. It's awfully unfair. Have you noticed that meat, dairy, and egg eaters always want to say, hey, well, lions eat zebras, I can eat a cow. The lions do a lot of other things that we don't do. Why is that the only thing we want to imitate from them? Lions sleep outside naked. Have insects crawling all over their bodies in their orifices and all that stuff. They eat bloody raw flesh with blood dripping down their face. They go and see an animal, they chase it down and tackle it. When was the last time you were driving down you know, some country road, you saw some cows and stopped the car and said, hey man, I'm gonna jump that fence and go tackle that cow. Take my jaw into that cow's abdomen and eat some blood and guts. We don't do anything they do. Okay, so I will make a promise to everybody. Once my species stops murdering and committing genocides against billions of innocent beings on this planet, I will fly to the jungles of Tanzania and try to convince lions not to eat zebras. Okay, but that's not my focus. Because lions also don't claim to be created in the image of God. Lions also don't claim to make the claims that we you know, say that we know right from wrong. We're compassionate. We're civilized beings. As long as we make these claims of being civilized, of knowing right from wrong, I'm going to be in everyone's face saying you've got to go all the way with it. You can't pick and choose who to be kind to, which is something, as you've probably noticed throughout history, we love to do. Why do we always have to go to the table of peace year after year, decade after decade, and say, hey, hey, can you let these black people free in America, please? No! Please, can you let them free and have, give them their equality? No! This goes on for 400 years, and then, you know, the end it's like, uh, can you please give us our freedom now? Eh, maybe. We're talking about it. And then we end up doing it. Same thing with women. No, can't have your equality. Please, can we have our, can we go to the same schools everyone goes to? Can we have a vote, you know, in our government? No. Can we please have the same rights as men? <sighs> maybe. We're talking about it. And now we're doing it with homosexuals. Hey, can we have the right, please, to see our loved ones when they're dying in the hospital? No! Can we just have the same freedoms that all other married couples have? No! Please? Eh, maybe. We're discussing it. Do we have to really discuss justice and equality over and over? Why do we remain the most brilliant species technologically? yet the stupidest one when it comes to ethics. We're on par with parasites. So all we do is oppress, harm, and torture, and murder somebody else who doesn't look and act like everybody else in the majority. We need to focus on our behavior. This is unnatural, okay? This is a massacre. This is the biggest holocaust that has ever existed. The worst form of slavery that has ever existed. Number one business on this planet, by the way, since the beginning of time, animal slavery. Why this has been going on the longest. And if you ever wonder why we can't get along with each other, you know we've practiced all the atrocities on the animals first. That's why we're experts at killing each other, harming each other, oppressing each other, exploiting each other. We tested it out on the animals first, became masters at this. Um, speciesism, species, being a speciesist, this is the root of all hatred on this planet. The root of all evil. First form of hatred human beings are taught, kill the animal animal doesn't count. Or, depending on which part of the world you are in, 
Certain animals count in America, Western world. Hey, dogs and cats are precious. Horses. Okay. But screw those cows. Fuck those chickens. Screw those turkeys. Kill them. Cut their beaks off. Kill them while they're still alive. Those lobsters, boil them alive. You do some pretty horrible things just for a sandwich. Good question. Yeah. Um, is the, in the vegan argument, is the suffering of plants not uh, acknowledged? Um, no, it is not, because it's a ridiculous argument. That carrot, if I came in here, by the way, and talked about the broccoli holocaust, how long would I be allowed to speak? Five seconds? Eight seconds? It's a really ridiculous argument. By the way, my best friend since uh, I was eight years old is still a non-vegan. And when he asked me, man, so what kind of arguments did they use this time? He said, well, they called me a carrot killer this time and a mushroom murderer. And he is forever embarrassed as a meat eater when people say the carrot stuff. But let me explain this in a couple ways. Number one, I think everybody should know a word. And if you don't, here's a new word for it. It's called sentient, S-E-N-T-I-E-N-T. It can also be pronounced sentient. Um, and that's having a central nervous system connected to a brain, connected to you know your heart, your liver, your lungs. That means you feel pain, you experience joy and happiness. Animals and humans are sentient beings. Carrots, mushrooms, broccoli, these are insentient beings. Incapable of suffering whatsoever. But a couple things I want you to think about, we talked about this during the speech, 50% of all the crops on this planet are set aside as animal feed. So if we truly were concerned about plants, we would destroy a lot less plants if we ate them directly instead of growing them all, destroying all this land to feed them to the 150 billion land animals on this planet every year. You know, I got a quote on my website from a group called the Council for Science and Technology, and they stated in the 90s, it shocked the vegan world, by the way, this is a group of animal agriculture people, they said, with all the cropland in America alone, we could feed the planet twice over. But there has to be one stipulation. Everyone would have to be vegans. This is how much less land and less plants we can destroy if we just ate the stuff directly. And since we are herbivores, and I know this probably shocks people, everybody thinks we're omnivores and carnivores, there is nothing omnivorous, carnivorous about us in any way whatsoever. As herbivores, we need to eat what we were meant to eat, unless you guys know how to become a breatharian. Uh, let me know, we can live off the oxygen, but you need to eat what you were meant to eat. And real quickly about humans being herbivores, if your lower jaw goes from side to side in a grinding, chewing motion like this, 100% herbivore. If you were an omnivore or carnivore, your jaws can only go like this, up and down, vertically, rip and swallow. You have a dog or cat at home, watch them eat. There's no chewing and grinding. If you sweat through your pores on a hot day, you are 100% herbivore. If you were a carnivore or an omnivore, you would pant to cool yourself down. No claws on the human hand. Claws are a trademark of the carnivore and the omnivore. The length of our intestines are somewhere between seven, uh, seven to 13 times the length of our torso. It's a very long intestinal tract. The same length of all herbivore animal intestines on this planet. The length of the intestines on real meat eaters, lions, hyenas, jaguars, only three to six times the length of their torso. And I used to make a challenge back in the day, Brandon probably remembers this, that if you really think humans are naturally meat eaters, Find a two-year-old child, put that child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple. If the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple, send me an email, I'll buy you a brand new car with a leather interior. And I'll buy you a steak sandwich too. Hey, we have zero carnivorous instincts, zero omnivorous in instincts whatsoever when we're young, when we're born, when we're growing up. And about the plant thing, one more thing, I just put this on my website by the way. It's coming around again. I noticed in the last 11 years of lecturing, some certain topics are hot for, for the public right now. All of a sudden, the last year, everyone's bringing up the plant argument again. Somebody must have said something on the radio. The plants are suffering. The plants are feeling pain. Here's something interesting. How come in the history of humankind, not one firefighter has ever ran into a house to rescue the plants? And don't say it's discriminatory, because animals are the most discriminated species on this planet, and there's still a protocol for rescuing them. Now, it's humans first, of course. We can get in the house, and there's people in there. Let's go save the human. And then if they come back out, they're like, okay, wait, my dog is in there, my dog. Okay, it's safe to go in. You, and you've seen the pictures, the big Hulk and firefighters coming out, a little puppy with a little oxygen mask. Like, oh, isn't that sweet? Even if it was a safe, even if it was safe for a third time to go back in, no firefighters going make us, hey, I'm going to go get the chrysanthemums. I'm going to get the rhododendron. I'm going to get the tomato and the basil plants. Quick, quick. 
So I'm going to get my plants. And I want to, so listen, I want to be fair about this. I like plants. I do. I got five at home. Actually, I got more than that. I got five succulents and three cacti at home. I dig them. I watch them all the time. It's a little forest I got right on my counter. Okay, but when my plants die and they've died over the years, you know what I do? I take them out of the, the bowl. I take them outside and I throw them outside. My dog Rex passed away January 24, 2004. Still know the date. My father passed away October 29, 2009. Still know the date. I think about them every single day. Never think about my old succulents and the cactus that I once had. Completely different life forms. But check out my website if you go to the All About Veganism section. I have a section entitled The Insipid Killing Plants Argument. I was going to say, so do you, are you okay with people then feeding their household animals meat? Or do you recommend a vegan diet for household animals? I recommend a vegan diet, but I want to be clear about this. I am not here to turn your dogs and cats into vegans. That's not why I travel the country seven and a half months a year. That's not why I've been arrested 13 times and kicked out of five countries to convert dogs and cats into vegans. But if you change your life, not a bad idea to change the life of somebody else you truly care about. Rex, by the way, passed away when he was 15. He was a vegan last nine years of his life when I found him, uh, just like his daddy. And uh, he was super healthy. Uh, 15 is a nice ripe old age. In fact, if you go to my website in the dog and cat section, the world's oldest dog um, by Guinness Book of World Records, a 27-year-old vegan dog from birth. It's great for them and it's great for us too. Now, here's why it's so great for them, that commercial dog food that we feed them, and all of it. I don't care what, what they're saying about it, it's natural. It's garbage, it's literally garbage. It's meat that's not fit for human consumption. It's recall meat, E. coli, salmonella, recall vegetables, E. coli, salmonella. The last place you can sell something to that nobody wants to eat who's a human, sell to pet food people. So this is why it's always better for them. Now dogs are pretty easy to turn into vegans. In fact, I rescued a dog over the summer, a Doyle. He's a 10 year old lab. 85 pounds, you guys know bigger dogs have uh, hip problems, dysplasia. When we got him, uh, he couldn't jump on the bed and he couldn't jump around outside. He wanted to play, he always loved to play fetch. They told us, we took him outside and just his, his old legs hurt. Less than one year, guess he's jumping around like a bunny rabbit on a vegan diet. Guess he's jumping up on the bed whenever he wants to. It's healing him and it heals us too. You want to eradicate? majority of all diseases and listen we got enough stress in life everyone's stressed out right got enough problems going on enough sugar and empty carbohydrates coming into our bodies why compound your problem your risk for disease by shoving things down your throat that don't belong there meat cheese milk and eggs does not belong in our bodies